This guy is on the phone with me and he's from one of the biggest rocket companies in the world. And he's like, what the F are you doing in Northern California? Then he proceeds to tell me I'm getting in my car and I will be there in the morning at your shop to take all of your work out. Oh man, oh man. Oh, it's story time, it's story time, all right? We're not gonna make this too long though, but this is a crazy story and we have a message, all right? Before I get started, please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, put your comments down below. All right, so let me break this down. We came through 08, 09, you guys know the story, right? Lost everything, went from ROV parts and then all of a sudden we're making rocket parts, right? Because we're solving those problems in titanium and ink and oil and stepping into complex parts. But now the magnitude has changed, right? Because we were making parts for ROVs that go to the bottom of the ocean and it's extremely important, but now we're making rocket parts that are going onto rockets that they're trying to test to actually get into space. And there's a lot of money on the line. Reputations, the future of companies, everything is on the line. We're on the ground floor. We have the opportunity of a lifetime. We've already delivered parts to spec to this company. And then all of a sudden, I get a phone call from Mr. Yarborough. And uh, some of you in the business know who I'm talking about, all right? I'm not mentioning companies, but you know who I'm talking about. And he calls me up and he's like, Titan, what the F? And I'm like already on eggshells, right? Because I know who's calling me and I run a company, right? I'm not used to people talking to me like that, but at the same time, I need to be careful because I don't understand the context of the conversation. And I have employees that are dependent on the work that this company is giving us. And they're presenting us with an opportunity to actually take our company to another level, right? So I'm humbling myself and he's like, what the F? We have parts in our facility that we need right now and they do not meet spec and you're putting us behind schedule. This is a problem. And all of a sudden he's like, you know what Titan? I'm jumping in my truck and driving the 10 hours to your company. I will be there tomorrow morning click oh man i go out and i talk to my guys and i'm like i don't even know what parts these are like what is going on here like why would i be getting this call and we had delivered different parts right so i wasn't actually sure what exact parts we were even talking about right so i went to my inspection department went to quality control and i'm like what did we just deliver to this company i call my guys in and i'm like look like, why am I getting this call, okay? We had these jobs, they went out, and the documentation says that they were perfect, so why am I having this problem? And we could not figure it out. So all of a sudden, my whole shop is put on notice. This guy's coming to our shop in the morning, and he's basically insinuated that he's taking all of his work out of our shop because we failed. Right? I go home that night and I talk to my wife and I sleep I'm all night. I'm just up, right? I go into my shop in the morning. And as I pull into my shop, there's a truck that I don't recognize and a gentleman in the truck sitting there at 6 a.m. I pull up, I park, I get out, he gets out and it's Mr. Yarbrough. And I, and I walk over and I shake his hand and he's not yelling, but he like shakes my hand and he's like, hello, and he's very short. He looks at the shop, he walks in my door, he looks at the granite, he looks at the tile, and he looks at everything and he's like, Titan, can you show me around? So I walk him through first place, like always, I walk him right through inspection. My guys were starting at seven o'clock, so they all hadn't arrived yet. So I walk in, turn on the lights, boom, boom, boom. I show them inspection, boom, right? CMM, all the equipment, boom. Walk them out in the shop, 
turn on the lights. Shop is huge. Machines stacked. Walk all the way down the line and I start showing them the different parts in process, the documentation. I can tell his whole mannerism basically dropped. Like the guy who said, what the, uh, like on the phone, this wasn't the guy anymore. This guy was actually analyzing my shop. So we walk through the shop, walk to the next building, walk through the shop, come back, walk to the front. I asked him to go into the conference room and he said, wait a minute, let's go to my truck. So we go to the truck, we pull out boxes of parts that we had delivered. As soon as he took out the boxes and basically opened one and I saw the part, I understood what we were dealing with, right? We had a crazy bore in one of these parts. And as you go down, all the way down, there were like eight finishes on the bottom. And I remember that we were struggling with those finishes and we made a contraption that basically went down with a compound to polish it but we didn't have a way to actually get down there to check the surface finish because our profilometer only had a stroke of like this much, right? And because we were new to aerospace, we just didn't have the experience, right? So, so I didn't say anything yet, but I, I knew. So we took the boxes, we took them into inspection, we opened them up, we took the parts out, we went back to my office, we took the parts out and basically sat down. My inspector came in, my shop foreman came in, a couple of my other leads came in. Mr. Yarbrough actually grabbed a hold of the part and then he took out some documentation and he took these photos out of the surface finish inside the bore. And he explained to us that there were scratches on the eight finish, that we had actually met the requirement, but we had screwed up the finishes and the parts needed to be assembled the following day. Therefore, the reason that he drove all the way over to our shop. So in this instance, my guys and me, we're quiet. We let him go through the paperwork and the documentation on the eight finish and basically showing that this is what you put down and therefore we trusted you to actually hit this surface finish and you compromised it. Not only did you compromise it, but the diameter is actually undersized on 20% of the parts. So we can't even get the mating part to actually fit into the part that you supplied. I just kept quiet and I listened to him. The guy who was angry on the phone saying, what the F, the guy who, who drove all night, probably thinking about how he was going to just lay into me, right? The guy who sat in my parking lot waiting for me to show up. Like, like I understood that there was something of magnitude that was happening and therefore I was humble and I and I walked them through the shop and I had complete clarity and transparency with everything. I explained all of it and then when we came in I was quiet and I allowed him to speak. I allowed him to carry on. My guys were quiet. My team was quiet and as soon as he finished I apologized and I said as a leader of this company it is my responsibility and my fault that you actually have parts that are not to spec and that you had to drive all the way up here and here is exactly what happened we accepted the part and I understood that that was going to be difficult and I quoted it anyway, thinking that we could figure it out. But during the process, we failed because we didn't have the right equipment. And then while inspecting it, we saw that it looked beautiful and it seemed incredibly smooth, but we truly didn't know 
because we didn't have the right machines to test it. We sent the parts in. That's my fault. That will never happen again, ever. I took complete ownership of it. I explained what happened and then allowed him to speak. And he said, you know what, Titan, in building rockets and, and going after such a grand vision, we're doing something and everybody expects us to fail. We have so much money on the line and we're dependent on our vendors to actually hit the specs that we call out so we all can be successful. I saw how much work they were actually sending to you. And I also knew that you were the only supplier in Northern California for machining. I didn't understand why they would give you this work and then you failed at it. So I came here, but after coming into your door, I get chills, man. I get chills because like, this is so real to me, right? After coming into your door and shaking your hand and seeing your quality department and seeing your machines and seeing your documentation and, and seeing you, right? I can see that you're about excellence. I can see that you're about fixing things. I can see your humility. Let's work together and fix this. I asked his suggestions. He had some simple ideas to actually fix the parts. The parts on the inside had been masked. Therefore, we still had raw material. So we created a game plan and we spent all day and all night fixing those parts. As we were fixing the parts on one machine, on a separate machine, we designed and created another inspection tool that sat down a certain way at the bottom to ensure that the diameter was perfect. We figured out the process together. We worked through it. The following day, Mr. Yarbrough took the parts back. They met spec and the parts got assembled and went onto the rocket. Okay. Now, as a manufacturer, as a leader, you know, it was very important for me to take that ownership, right? Take the leadership, not pass it off on my guys, not pass it off on inspection. I'm the owner. It has to ride on my shoulders, right? So we accepted responsibility. We humbled ourselves and talked through it. We came up with a, a new process that the customer approved of. We stopped everything to take care of the customer and we fixed the parts. They went back later. He joked with me and was like, man, I saw this picture of you like with tattoos on the internet and you're in Northern California. I'm thinking, who is this guy? He's like making parts in his barn. I came up to basically put a halt to the whole relationship. But Titan, again, when I came in, I saw excellence. This is the type of partnership that we need. This is the type of vendor that we need to grow with, right? And from that point on, he and I became great friends. When the company would have complex parts that they couldn't hit and they didn't have a vendor, he would go to the buyer and he would say, give it to Titan's team. And each time, I would humble myself and I would talk to him and I'd say, we've never done this before, but we did this, 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 and this, right? So this is how I see it. How do you see it? You know, let's be partners here and work through the problem. And we would put the time in, we'd develop the parts, we'd ship the parts, the parts would go on rockets, the rockets would go up. I took incredible pride that we're making these aerospace parts. And people would always and still do ask me, how did you build that relationship? You know, and, and you've heard me say, like, I sent letters, right? And I, and I hustled to get the opportunity. But truly, the relationship really started when we screwed up badly, right? And he came to my shop. But sometimes when you have the worst mistakes, and you actually work through mistakes with the engineer and the company. 
and together you fix things and you follow through with your word and you lift your workmanship and you still deliver the parts to solve the problem, that is how relationships are built, right? That's how it's built. You want to be a great vendor for your company? Solve their problems. If they come to you with a problem and they say this is a problem and they even insinuate that it's your problem, don't be defensive. Lay it on the table, open up, talk to them about the problem. Even if you don't get paid for that extra time, how you handle that situation will reflect in the future and can change the entire course of your company's future. Boom. Oh man, oh man. All right, so we make mistakes. We own the mistakes. We humble ourselves. We do absolutely what it takes to fix the problem, right? So that we can move on. And through the process, we build relationships, right? This is one of those stories that maybe it doesn't hit everybody, but as a shop owner, like this is serious stuff, right? And this is the stuff where like young guys can learn from it. All right, so I got a little call to action right now. If you're a shop owner, if you're a leader, if you're a machinist, if you have a story to tell, if you have advice for people who are going through it, please put it down in the comments. Like, let's read about it. Let's talk about it. Let's make community happen right here on this YouTube page. Let's take it all to another level so we all can rise, we can compete, we can lift up manufacturing. Boom, I'm getting excited. Uh, I'm going to be checking out those comments. I will see you on the next one.